Okay, we've got the left hand kingpin assembly here on the bench and I've had it off the 135 six speed for ages now and I thought I'd just run through what we do when we're doing the wheel bearings and things. Um, uh, all this that's happening here can be done on the tractor. Um, if you just need to do the wheel bearings you can just pop the um, pop this piece off and do the bearings itself. Um, we're doing the kingpin bushes as well so we'll probably run right through it. So to start with we'll just flip him over and I've undone this earlier and we take the the bolt away from the bell crank up the top here. Now the bell crank is what your tie rod end goes on to. And they usually come off quite easily. I believe the left and right hand sides the same as the, the keyways in line with the arm on both of them. So once we have that out, there's often a little felt up the top here, but this one has a rubber and it also if I get it up in the frame here we can see a keyway. So we'll give that a bit of a give the keyway a little bit of a smack. It's a woodruff key. He comes out. And for the moment we'll just leave, normally on your tractor this will just slot out and you end up with the, the kingpin housing empty and you can see this bearing's buggered, it's falling apart as we pull him apart but um, what we'll do just for the sake of the video is try and set that up Look at that, there's a stand made just for that. So that you can see what goes on down the guts there. So, so I've loosened this off as well. Now I've done, this is the second one, I've done the first one and I've left it apart just to show you a couple of things so we can pull one apart and we can put one together. This is a messy job normally. We have the cap and then inside here, I'll just go and grab some gloves. Oh, not some gloves. Some okay, rag. we've got the cap off. I went and got some rag that I didn't have and we need to wipe the top of this off. And you can see a split pin here. Now it's been folded down to the back. So we can get that back bit and just straighten him up as best we can. Then the front of that split pin we just fold him over here. So we're just looking to get that nice and straight to pull out. So. You can see the adjustments going off the bearing, that's slopping around a bit, but look, you'll find a lot like that, there's no, no big deal. Then we should be able to extract that split pin. He can actually drop over straight into the bin. And another thing I do, some people do, some don't, suit yourself, I like to put the wheel nuts back on so when we're mucking around with all this stuff we're not actually wrecking the, um, the threads, you know, the male threads on the hub. So I normally use a shifting spanner for this, but that's all right. That will just undo.
It'll just undo until you put the shifter down, then it doesn't want to. What do you fellas call Crescent. Crescent wrench. Craftsman spanner or something. In Australia they're a shifter. And that will then just pull out. And you're left with the stub axle here. Now the things we look at on the stub axle are the bearing hasn't been turning on the surface up here, that looks good. Sometimes when the nuts come loose, the thread here gets worn. Look, ours is fine, there's nothing to worry about there. We can We can slide that kingpin assembly out, and this one's even been getting some grease, so that's a bit flash, isn't it? The, the thrust bearing. He's he sits down. There's a hard steel surface on the thrust bearing. That goes down. That can go straight in the bin. And we look for where, where the bushes go. You can see there's been a bush here. You can see the lines up the top. I'll try and make that a bit clearer. From there to there, there's a bush. And I can barely feel any difference between the unworn shaft here and the worn. Same here. So we don't have to worry about these too much. They're good. The seal surface where the seal keeps the grease in and the water out. That's okay, no big grooves here at all. That's good, we're happy with all that. The kingpin housing, now you, you have split bushes in the kingpin housing, but we'll shift the camera a bit later and we'll, we'll run through doing that. For the moment, This bearing comes out, there's a, there's a hardened steel washer with a keyway on it and that, that stops uh, any rotation in this bearing transferring onto the nut and it loosening the nut off. So we have a small tapered roll of bearing here, then inside we actually have the cup The cup that that runs on. These look good, but we're going to put new ones in anyway. Now, in the back, we have a seal. That's the seal there. And that's facing the outside, so it keeps all the rubbish out and any extra grease can get out. Um, there's a couple of different lines of thought. I've seen people put them one way to keep the grease in. Some of the new seals are double lip, so you have one going in to keep the grease in, and the, the idea of having one going in is if your seal happens to have a spring on it, well, it's got grease and your spring's not going to rust away. But, um, and with the double lip, the outer lip keeps all the rubbish out, but it sits in, it sits in here anyway, so it's not normally a big worry, but they do get junk in there. You always have to clean that out. But to get that end out, what we do is I've got a I've got an old bent up chisel I've had for since Noah was a boy. Well look at that. A couple of hits and out she come. It was just chasing it around the bench, I couldn't get a good smack on it. Now to get the bearing cups out, there's a little cutaway in behind there, so you can see the round surface where the bearing cup sits, and then there's a cutaway here. Now, I'll show you on the one I've got ready for assembly. Now you can see the cutouts there, and that's where you bring your punch down through the back. And it's the same on the front, so you can actually get, even though the cup is supported, there's a cutaway on each side that gives you a place to um, to get onto the back of the bearing and get that out. So, so look, I'll go and tidy this up, I'll clean the bench, we'll press the restart and we'll come back when everything's a bit tidier. 
Okay, we've had a reset and we're just going to knock these bushes out. Now look, they don't look too bad, but look, we're going to replace them. We, we want everything right. Now, with these kingpin bushes, this is a new kingpin bush. And you'll notice down the back here, a little split. And they all have that. So what I like to do here is have a good look around the top of this bush. And I run a little bit of sharp wire or an o-ring pick or something around the top and try and find that, that split. And look, it is hard to find. I can't actually see it there. Look, I can't pick it there. And look, that's the case quite often. Um, you can't seem to to get them. Look, I can't see that for looking. I imagine it will have one. Might be a little little burr there maybe just there alright let's try that, hope it's there um, I get this wrong as much as I get it right so look I've got a screwdriver it's an old buggered one from hitting it with a hammer and it's got a round back on it so it doesn't scarp the outside here and just a normal front so it's quite sharp so I've got this in the vise clamped in tight so we'll see Yes, see I, I got lucky and I found the jaw. And so then we come up from underneath, it's still full of grease in there, I haven't cleaned it yet. So the idea was to try and find the join, collapse it on the join because it will roll into itself. You can see, I've got a bit of shadow happening here today. You can see it where it's collapsed into itself. And that also gives us a little bit of a lip down the bottom to come and bump the bush out. So we'll do the other one. Um, I'll come back and we'll have a quick look at assembly. Okay, well we'll start, this is the other side. Um, I've bead blasted it all, sandblasted it all, ready for paint. And we'll get it all assembled. And, um, first up though, what we need to do is, I've got a bit of break lean there, I'll just put out of the way. Um, these little kits here, they're, they're a little bearing driver kit, and I picked this one up off eBay for like $19. And look, it's just handy sometimes. If you haven't got a press, there's nothing wrong with bumping your bearings in. Um, I'll put that over out of the way. Now, the, the first bearing, well, it doesn't matter which way you do this, it just doesn't matter at all. And it goes in with the skinny side up. The fat side goes down. That way, that way the bearing can drop in. It can come in from that direction. So with these little drivers, it's just clever. We'll pop that on the handle here. And look, you don't have to have this. You can just have a little piece of flat steel. You can grind the outer of the old bearing down and, and use that. So we'll try and um, pop this in. Now, I often like to just put a little bit of oil around the back of the bearings just to, just to lubricate them so they're not trying to go in dry. And one thing is pop your little 
pop whatever you're driving it with down in the hole there make sure it's not too big so we can pop this in oh with this too it's alloy so it won't damage the bearing and it centralizes so so that helps I usually press these in but I don't know how many of you have presses and things like that so I thought I'll just do this one this way the other one I'll probably press in so have a look at your bearing once again this is smaller than that that'll go down in so we'll change the tool over be yeah, a cheap little tool I suppose these will wear out after a while but that's okay we don't mind once again tad of oil around the outer Try and get him as central as you can. That's all the way home with no damage to the bearing. Everyone's looking okay. I'll just give that a bit of a wipe. This other one will give a wipe as well. Now, we have to pack these bearings with grease. So, I've got a. Here's some I prepared earlier. This is Valvoline Optimum Choice. The brand of grease just has nothing to do with it. So, grab a big wipe of grease. Put it around inside that housing. All the way around I like to. It's over greasing I know, but that's alright. What's it matter? Run some on the cups. Some people say you shouldn't put any in the middle, it doesn't do any good, but oh, just... Yeah. It's another one of those things, like I say, if it doesn't help. Does it do any harm? Well, no, it doesn't. Right, now while you've got your hands dirty, grab a wallop of grease, like that. Grab the bearing and scrape the bearing through the grease and onto the palm of your hand, like that. And what you're doing is forcing the grease up into the bearing so it has enough grease to get going with. And you can see the grease now coming out the other side. So we know that's full, that's good. Pop him in there. This other little fella do the exact same thing. Force it against the, the ball of your thumb there, I suppose you'd call it. And that pushes the grease in. Now look, you can buy stuff, you can buy a bearing packer and all that to do this job. So if you don't like doing this, that's fine. Now that can sit over there for the moment. I'm gonna go and wash my hands. Okay, back again. Now, the seal, when I was pulling it apart, I said I've seen them both ways and um, different brands have a different idea. So I had a quick read of the manual and they're saying fit this this way. So, and I thought, oh, well, why would it do that? You know, why would they say that? And that's just flush, but the lip seal is in a little bit further. So when you look at the stub axle, And here's one I prepared earlier. Um, the 
there's a there's a little cutout in there to let the seal go in but there's also a shoulder to bring the seal down on so what we're going to do there is we'll just make sure there's a little bit of grease around there just to help the seal in nice and easy now we'll get a disc that's way too big which would be that one turn him upside down That's going crooked as buggery lands. And there's the seal. The bearings still got some movement in there, so you can see it. So that'll be pressed away from the seal, so we're good. We're just down to the lip. We'll run a bit of grease around the lip. Now on the kingpin housing and the stub axle, we just need to make sure that's clean. There's no nip, no burrs or anything like that there. And then we should be able to just slide this down over. And you'll feel where the seal wants to start. And if you just give him a bit of a push and a turn, there you go, we're down. And you can feel it coming back on the seal so we grab this other bearing then and pop that on push him right down give him a few turns and I'll go and get the lock tab and the nut for this side okay we've got the hub sitting up here on the bench and have a look at these washers here, you can see that side's been against the bearing at some stage and the nut's been there, that tag, that looks okay. So look, whichever way you'd like to turn it around, it just doesn't matter. That goes down in there, now the nut comes on. Yeah, we'll just nip that up. We probably should have the correct spanner for that, but anyway, we'll just do this for the moment. Now, just do that up firm and run your bearings around a few times. There is a measurement for that and I think it's look for a big bolt it's way down there like 30 pounds or something like that so it's not a lot. But yeah you go six or seven turns around and we and what we're doing there is making sure the bearings are seating properly. All the rollers are in the right place. Just nip them up again that little bit and do the same. Look that's turning lovely. It's got a good feel to it. The old shed started to crackle halfway through this. Look, that feels fine. The bearing's been nipped up. Yep, so now we're just going to back it off. You can feel that's just a little bit loose in there. So um, once you just nip it up, it's a feel thing. Take it up until you can just, you, you feel like you've bottomed out sort of thing and turn it, then try again. And then 
back it off till the nearest um, castellation lines up for the split bin. So look, that's good. That's not hard to turn at all. So I we'll have a split pin here. We'll slide the split pin through. That's where we backed him off to where the split pin was. So we'll just bump that through. side cutters handy. I might just bring him up, cut him and put him down. Just need this shorter than the thread there. Oops, sorry about that. And then we don't knock this all the way down. It's not folded right over the edge, but we've left enough room there for this cup to go down inside. So for that part of it. Put a swipe of grease on here. That's inch and a sixteenth if you want to use the correct spanner. Now the one on the other side, or actually this one, this is a nut off the other side, it was on that tight that we actually rounded the corners with the proper spanners and broke the corner off it, so we have to find another one now. So I also took the nuts off this just to sandblast all the threads. So, so look, all we need here is a bit of a just a nip up like that. That's all that's needed. Don't overdo it. We'll give that a wipe. Tidy up. Tidy up the bench. There's my video drop. And we'll move on and we'll slide a couple of kingpins in a new well, we're house. We're around the other side now. Um, oh, on the, on the vice, I should say. And here's the kingpin bushes. Now, I like using these Bearco ones. They actually have a grease track up in them. And so they just sit down. I'll tighten this vice up. It's a little bit loose. I'll just put one of these in for you so you can see what has to happen. Now, on some tractors and the, on some brands of these kingpin bushes, you have to ream them to size. But normally these Bearco ones are pretty good. They're, they're pretty well on size, but, oh look, we may have to. That's not too bad, but look, we'll just see. If we've got to ream them, we'll ream them. There's no problem doing that if you've got a little bit of stuff to, to do it with. Okay, so to get these in, we usually just get a, get a little plate or something like that. And we can use, pardon me for a second, nip it in there like that. But I have this tool that I use for all sorts of things. And it can come down, and it can actually fit right down there so we'll turn the handle around on that and 
and the lubricated bush. Now with these bushes, um, sometimes I run around and I deburr this edge in case it's been worn down too far, but the bush has a little chamfer on it. Now where the split goes, it doesn't really matter. Um, the, the weight on these axles is out on the bottom. So if we just pop him, where's our split? Our split on this one's to the back of the kingpin. So we need to just start that gently. Make sure we're square. And that's us all the way home. Now, you don't have to bash them in. You can get a big, long, big lump of threaded rod with a big steel washer each side and you can pull them in as well. So, but that feels pretty good. That's... That's right down home. Now just for interest's sake, we'll grab our kingpin and see if it fits. Oh, it's close, but just a little tight. So we might run a ream down there in a little while. Okay, we've got both bushes in, and I'm going to grease them up a little bit first and see. I think we're that close that this kingpin will probably sit in, no worries. Um, we'll probably have to bump him past this. There's a little bit of a rough bit up here. So we'll look, we'll give it a go. We may come a gutsa with this, but we'll just see. Now the thrust bearing, you'll notice there's a chin cover on the outer of the thrust bearing. So it goes in first and then the axle pivots on this hardened surface here. So we'll try with a little bit of lube on these bushes. And this has a grease nipple in it so we can grease them up. Excuse me, I'll have to put a little bit of grease there and a bit of grease on the other one. And they have a grease nipple here for greasing them, so grease is not going to be an issue. Look, what I may do is work a little bit of grease into this thrust so it's, it doesn't ever run dry. Okay, we'll place this in. Yeah, that's going down. I'll get the camera out of the way and I'll come back in a minute. Right, you'll see it's a bit firm, but there's a very slight little bit of wear on the kingpin, so I've been trying to work this through the bush and let it sink down. So that's what we're doing. It's slowly going down, just working back and forth. And there we go. So I'm glad I didn't have to ream that. Um, I was wondering if I was going to have to or not. But look, that's a good fix there. Now we'll get some more of this out of the way. And look, I probably won't film that, but look, all we have to do is bring a, a dust seal down the top, and that keeps the moisture in that out. And there's a there's a recess in this top here for the dust seal to sit into and we make sure we put the key in after the dust seal and then we clean this up and tidy it up so that's it um, that should give you a bit of a guide on how to do your kingpin bushes and um, your front wheel bearings and, and set them up so 
That's it. Let's go and find something else to do.